welcome yoga in the garden we're going to sit in sukhasana cross legs obviously um, you can and should sit on a, a support if your knees are up high or your lower back is down low now that support can be if you've got a yoga block or a neatly folded blanket obviously something even so buttock flesh drawn out and back whether you're on a block or not by the way if you're on more than one block and some of you will need to be if your lower back's compressed a little bit uh, then really important to sit on two but equally important then to take a blanket and put it under your shins if you're on two blocks we take our palms up whether on one block two blocks no blocks take our attention in heads a little lowered spines light breaths honest and there may be subtle movement So it could be the subtle movement of your pelvis and how that affects the subtle movement of your back. And that subtle movement it has a purpose. And that purpose is absorption, samadhi. So absorption is straightforward, just disappear into your experience. So make that happen through movement, attracting your attention, looking for space, ducking underneath habits that normally occupy the body. So it might feel like your pelvis is slightly circling or moving left or right. It's experimental, it's investigative. And in this way, we immerse ourselves in the living world. Release your fingers, give them a little wiggle. Rub the hands together, bring them to the heart. Plant your hands at the heart. Sometimes I wiggle my hands a little bit <clears throat> just to bring myself into that centered space. Breathing through your nose, we're going to chant Om, which is our agreement to the way things are. Um, three times, agreeing with life, saying yes to life. Take a deep breath in. a few deep breaths coming up. Very, very important. That's why we're here to breathe. To breathe. So fundamental to our health, mental health, physical health. To breathe. To allow breath. And if we're not allowing breath, then breath is taken over by habit and becomes shallow. So we're allowing breath. And allowing breath means allowing movement that accompanies breath be subtle movement again of the pelvis, it's whatever supports and serves the free flow of the breath, that's all, you know, it's just whatever supports and serves. Now inhale, lift up from your groins, exhale, put the right hand on the floor behind you, left hand crosses over both legs, breathe again freely, remind yourself to unplug the breath as it were, and sometimes that means taking a deliberately deep breath. Sometimes that means moving the body, you know, it's whatever, but know that freedom of the breath <clears throat> is necessarily freedom of everything. You can't have a free breath without letting the body be more expressive, without letting the mind release ideas of past and future and self in the present. So it's this beautiful thing where you just give. Just give, that's all it is. Nothing else is required. So you're giving to her, Prakriti is the sort of older term from Sankhya Yoga, which means this everything actually, this living moment, the thoughts, feelings, physical sensations, movement of the air, everything. You give to her because she sets you free. It's through her, according to the Sankhya Karika, <clears throat> that we both gain enjoyment and liberation. in her she's ungraspable and because she's ungraspable you don't grasp and when you don't grasp you realize that you're free inhaling to lift keep lifting as you turn all the way around to the other side 
catching your breath. It means unplugging the breath, it means taking a deep breath. And then letting the breath come out of these controlled patterns, controlled by memory, ideas, grasping. So deep, honest breath. Klesha karma vipakashayera paramistaha purusha visesha ishwaraha is from the Patanjali Yoga Sutra and one of the emphases there is that Ishwara and Ishwara means something like you know the Lord of Yoga or you know the one who knows because Ish means mastery to master so to become a master to know in this very moment you have to give through that knowing and to be able to give to that knowing klesha karma vipakashaya affliction action fruits of action and stored up stuff so empty out in other words don't store anything don't try and hoard yoga or no yoga or accumulate yoga just give and then out of that giving comes knowing profound it dances out of your own core center it dances out of your own core center Turn to the center, palms up, gnana, to know, mudra, seal, deep breath. Shoulders drop, breathing nasal if you can. Give your fingers a little wiggle. <clears throat> and we'll come out of this Sukhasana position, but remember which leg you've got crossed in front of which leg. <clears throat> and if you're on a block or a blanket or anything at all, come off that because we're coming into Upaya Padangusasana. Sit a little forwards on your mat so that you don't roll off the back and hold your big toes. Make a really firm loop around, really like proper loop, not a hook. Spend a bit of time getting that loop. It actually helps the health of your fingers and your finger joints. But also it becomes a mudra, again, a focal point. You lean back until your heels can come off the floor. And nine times out of ten, that's enough. You know, movements come, <clears throat> subtle movement. Breath comes, it's all about breath, it's not about stored up stuff. Kisa karma vipakashyayera paramritaha, unaffected by stored up stuff. Now you can experiment if you want. Raise one leg a little or both legs. The point is you're looking for a portal. <clears throat> point is you're looking for a way to disappear. Joy is soft. Breathing is deep. We've got you know, the music of the birds. Got a little bit of sound. It's like a bit of the music from our neighbor maybe coming in as well. Practicing piano. It's all part of practice. So obviously in books you might see people raising both legs, the legs might be together, the legs might be apart. But you're using it as a portal. Okay, nice and easy, come out, bring the soles of the feet together and the knees apart. If you can reach underneath your feet, great. Otherwise you can rest your hands where they're comfortable. And I find it useful as you can see moving side to side because in that way I'm walking the sitting bones away from each other and back. A good amount of space between the heels and pelvis is also useful. <clears throat> and it's study. It's study. That is, you disappear. So study means absorption, you disappear. Into the subtle changing sensations. And you do that through play. Lila. You know you're doing the right thing because your breath affirms it. If the breath goes shallow, it shows that there's somebody trying to do something. side to side, you can find ways to disappear and re-arise. Okay, 
it is obviously for many, but not all, a lovely place to stay a while. But we're going to gently come out of this pose and into an old favourite. How old it is, we're not sure, not that old. A Dhamma Kushwanasana, down face dog. So come on to your hands and knees. Check that your hands, <coughs> you can sit back on your haunches with toes tucked under. Check that your hands are equal distant from the sides and the front of the mat. Have a really good check, like it really mattered. It kind of doesn't, and it kind of does. So check. And check your middle fingers are facing forwards, and check all your fingers are spread well. And then enjoy Bhoga. Touch the floor, and really touch. So to get that contact, move. Left and right, and breathe. And then you can feel more and more. And as you feel more and more, you disappear more and more into the feelings. And the feelings of reality are ungraspable because they're interdependent and constantly changing. And because they're not graspable, grasping is transcendent. Grasping is where we attach a sense of self to a thought, a physical sensation, or anything at all. When you're ready, lift up your bum. And just as you checked your hands, <clears throat> check also your feet. They should be equidistant from the side of the mat. Now it doesn't matter how far <clears throat> together, or how far apart your hands or feet are. The hands can be really wide or really narrow. The feet can be really wide or really narrow. But the point is they should be the same as each other. That is, the hands should be the same distance from the edge of the mat as each other, and the feet should be the same distance from the edge of the mat as each other. They don't have to be the same. Uh, as uh, the hands don't have to be the same as the feet, or the feet the same as the hands, just the feet with the feet, the hands with the hands. And then you're playing to get grip, to get your palms to really grip, energetically, you know, to merge. So, you know, spreading and moving, and then feeling every part of the palm over time light up. It's a beautiful thing to feel, you know. And then you don't have to worry about turning the elbows out, you know, or turning the elbows in. Because some people, you know, turn the elbows out, yep, nice enough, but opens up some parts, but restricts others. Turning the arms in might open up lower parts of the back, because you lose some of that by opening the uh, shoulder blades. But if you don't worry about in or out, and just concentrate on your palm, then what you need happens by itself. You need happens. Heels stretch back, not so much down. And perhaps if you try one leg at a time, you can get a little upshot of energy from the top of the shin. You know, one heel goes back, you just feel a little upshot. Another heel goes back, you feel a little upshot. And you keep working on that. And the chest open. Well done, come down to Vajrasana. Now heel, uh, here, some of us will need a block <coughs> or a blanket between the heels and buttocks, one hand on top of the other. Catch your breath. Catch your breath. So really allowing the breath to come and go. And again, there may be subtle movement, but, you know, uh, side to side, something I nearly always find myself doing, because of course, when you move on your shin side to side, it affects your back muscles. One side shortens, the other side lengthens, so vice versa. And shortening compresses the tissue and lengthening and, and, and stretching the tissue on the other side. <clears throat> so that constitutes a sort of massage. And if you meditate on that massage, you disappear into it. And you know you're disappearing into it because your breath opens up. This is disappearing from attachment to thoughts. This is disappearing from a sense of reaching out. And the breath's opening up. Back to your hands and knees when you're ready. Once you're on your hands and knees, again, take a deep breath or two. So a little lunge for that marvelous psoas major. <clears throat> take the foot that's furthest away or 
doesn't work with the camera, does it? Just take your right foot forward and put it in the place of your hand. And then lift your back knee and stretch the groin deliberately, not over vivaciously, but you know, consciously, playfully, investigatively. So that could involve turning your heel in or out, dropping the knee down or lifting it up, taking the body forwards or back. It's not about whether you think it's right or whether you remember it's right, but it's whether or not it draws you in and it opens your breath. <clears throat> Live and in the present. So deep, expressive breaths. Eventually the knee will land behind the pelvis. Now, of course, many people do like to put padding under the knees and you can do that if you want. I used to do that myself, but I now find that a release of the groin upwardly does the job very well. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Place your hands one on top of the other on top of your front leg. Whether your back toes are tucked under or pointing back is up to you. Again, that will make a difference to whether it's comfortable for you or not, depending on where the bursts are in your knees. And then focus on your inner groin of the back leg, the very top of the inner thigh as it goes across the pubis. Breathe deep and visually feel a release from the inner groin of the back leg, visually feel. So here, as we said at the beginning, OM, we're saying OM again with our breath. I assent, I agree. So we're giving our permission. And that's a vital part of yoga, just giving. I say yes. Do that with your breath if you want. You can raise your arms up. You're still looking to say yes, especially that inner groin. And it's an upwards release. Light tone in the tummy as well. Okay, bring your arms down <coughs> and back to hands and knees. And catch a deep breath. You might wag your tail. <coughs> You know, so that you're loosening. And again, it's not arbitrary, it's not remembered, it's not done because you think you should do it or because you're told to do it. It's investigative. You know, you're looking for intimacy. And you're looking for intimacy that draws you in so that you enter into a new world, as it were. You know, the world of prakriti, the world of richness. Subtly changing, interconnected, ungraspable. And then as you disappear, you re arise in your true form. Tada drashtu svarupe avastana. You arise in your true form. Okay, other foot forward. And then lift your back knee and play. You know, so you can lift it and replace it and lift it and replace it. <clears throat> the purpose of the play is to open that inner groin. So multiple movements. Multiple movements to open that inner groin. Again, the back toes can be tucked under or not. You can bring your hands up into your legs. And then focus on the inner groin. Tone your tummy too. Draw it lightly in. So you're breathing through your nose, focusing on the inner groin. And giving your consent. I consent. I agree. This is a big deal, you know, because to consent to this... You have to let go of that. Past, you know, there's so many attachments to the past, aren't there? The future, <clears throat> which hasn't happened yet. So many attachments to the future, what I will become, so on. Raise your arms if you're ready. <clears throat> Lightly tone your tummy from pubis to chest. Give your ascent to the upward release from the groin. And give everything, don't hold anything back, give everything. Hold on, coming forwards. Come out, back to hands and knees, where you can catch your breath again. <coughs> Excuse the frog in my throat. You can wag your tail if you need to. Jaw soft. Now we're going to take the knee <coughs> that's furthest away from me and put it directly behind its own wrist. So 
you should be practicing at home, doesn't matter which knee, just put a knee behind the wrist and then the foot of that leg moves diagonally across the body and you stretch your other leg back. Now any problems with your knee, immediately lean away from your foot towards the knee. Huh? Even if it's just a bit tight, immediately lean that way, it brings it into the hip and stops the foot fulcruming the knee as much. If you put the weight over the foot, it's gonna fulcrum it subtly, but that will put more pressure on the medial meniscus. We can either be forwards like I am here, or forwards like this, but not lower today. We can go lower, but not today. <clears throat> or if that feels right for you, even uh, a little higher. And we have to qualify what right means. It means there's a sense of space that you can bring between your number vertebrae. And a sense of those heavy lower back bones becoming lighter. Breath is everything. <clears throat> so ascent with your breath. Breath is everything. Let your breath be the expressive part. Let your breath be the honest part. nice light tone on the belly and a buoyant feeling on the pelvic floor which is alive you know is an alive feeling to it not a not a done action based lift it's more alive tuck under your back toes forwards and then bring your back knee forwards come back to your hands and knees some huffing, some puffing, some moving, some swaying. And we're always surrendering, always surrendering. You know, giving. It's an act of generosity. When ready, the other knee you can go directly behind the other wrist. The foot again moves diagonally across the body. Stretch back the other leg. Remember, anyone with tightness in the knee, lean right away from the foot. <clears throat> and even if it's you know just temporary tightness, it's worth doing. And then gradually, perhaps, moving forwards if you did have tension in the knee so that you can bring the weight more even on the back. But it's fine to keep leaning away from the foot. <coughs> variety of different ways you can place your hands, as I mentioned, forwards or onto the forearms or onto one foot and one knee, like I'm doing here. You're looking for positions that you can use as meditation. Meditation meaning you become absorbed in, in this case, prakriti, yeah? nature. So this prefix pra, like the prefix para, means, you know, the, the ultimate. Yeah? The ultimate creation, the ultimate creation, everything. but not as an abstract, but as a tangible here and now embodiment that you can feel living, changing, moving, and that you dance with, like a surfer rides a wave. So a surfer rides a wave by giving to the wave. Surrendering. They don't plan, can't plan what the wave's going to be like. But they learn how to give. So feel your body experiences like a wave. Coming forwards and coming out <coughs> and back to hands and knees. Just advance your knees towards your wrist and turn both your hands as it were the wrong way round and breathe around the circumference of your wrists. In some cases that feels just right, just enough mm -hmm. to breathe into. Not too much, just right, just enough. 
Some, some people want to take their knees back a little further. Further, don't forget, doesn't equal better. Go further down any particular road, it doesn't necessarily get better and better. The further down the road you go, the A27 or the M24, <laughs> not necessarily better and better. doesn't get better and better necessarily. What makes it work, what makes it good is that you're able to breathe into it now. The movement might be almost certainly will be part of that. Be subtle movement of the pelvis, be subtle movement of the legs, subtle movement of the shoulders. Not arbitrary, it doesn't lead to doubt or uncertainty because you can feel for sure. And it's leading to absorption. You can feel it in your breath as it opens up. Okay, knees back if you took them away. Just peel each hand slowly up. And temporarily come to high heel kneeling position. That's where you tuck your toes under. Now for some people that's a living hell and for some people it's impossible. Certainly if you've had uh, metal work in your feet you won't be able to bend your toes like this. So it's fine to sit in an ordinary kneeling position. Interlace your fingers, stretch your arms diagonally away and without impinging on the trapezius, the upper back and neck, raise your arms up. About three quarters of the way up is where you might need to soften the neck, breathe into the neck, jaw passive, soften the tummy, look for height, maximize the height, and breathe honestly. Again, I often move side to side, my way of feeling into it and ducking under habit patterns in the body that otherwise tend to arrest the body, mind, breath. So I kind of duck under those and feel into a more and more central feeling, a more and more gathered feeling, ekagrata. Ekagrata is an interesting word, one grasping. Grasping is just one thing. Right? Most of us are grasping multiple things. We grasp just this moment. Focus on just this moment, the richness, especially around the center of your body line. Feel into the center of your body line, anterior to your spine, all the way through. Good, okay, it's pretty long for many people. Big, wide circle. And from there, we're going to lift our knees, <coughs> and then we're going to come up all the way up to a standing position. <coughs> Tadasana. If anatomically possible, feet together. If not, not. If pregnant, take them apart. If they are apart, make sure they're level. If they're together or apart, spread your toes multiple times. People have various ways that they like to do it. I'm a lateral spreader, um, but I've noticed more people than me prefer the sort of back and forth. They like to lift their heels. Like to, but for me, I like to spread across the feet, huh? the webbing across the feet. So it's up to you for multiple movements. And you can imagine that the tissue on the soles of the feet is like webs as it is everywhere, like webs. And you stretch and expand and pull those webs, and it moves the body all the way up. So I can feel that what happens in my feet happens in the ankles, what happens in your ankles happens in your hips, what happens in your ankles and hips happens in your knees. And then you're finding the pelvic floor. Arms rest, but don't do too much with them. Arms rest, but don't do too much with them. Instead, undo what they're doing subconsciously. What they're doing subconsciously, probably, is there's some, this ahankara, this eye maker, gripping, grasping around particularities in the present moment that we view as mine, while others we view as not mine. I am supposed to be like this, I'm not supposed to be like that, and it makes us tense. And that tension in the chest, interiorly, or internally rather, rotates the arms and brings them forward, so if you release that tension, your arms may well drift out and back, but don't do it as an action, let it be an expression. Keep turning your arms, letting them turn, and then raise up. Udva, upwards, hasta, hands. Again, the roots of your neck should be soft. 
I sometimes even raise my heels up just a little alternately because I can use that movement because again it massages the back and helps me feel into the central channel. So that's an option. We're looking for height, height, height. We are raising the arms up. We don't want to tense the neck. So see if you can have the arms up without tensing the neck. So that's head position in two senses. Space time where you know back or forwards. And then also attitudinal. If your head position changes, your body changes. You know, your if your Dardashana changes. So you can experiment deliberately with your Dardashana, your view. Like I am doing yoga and I love yoga. I love yoga. You know, if you just said that to yourself loads of times, I love yoga. I love you know whatever triggers you posit positively, you'll feel you can find positive releases for your neck. Press your feet, raise your fingers, inhale. Exhale, bend ankles, knees and hips, utkatasana. And you can move left, <clears throat> right, up, down, really low, much higher. You can even extend your arms out laterally. Of course, this is where we get this constant invention of new yoga postures, like the Paravrita utkatasana, for example. But they all come originally from a much more expressive origin of yoga. Which is an expression from the core center. It's not abstract, you're not somebody being expressive. You know, it's not like that, it's not contrived. It conduces to flow. That's the bottom line. on the hips and step your feet generously. Check your toes equidistant from the front of your mat. Double check. Perhaps you can extend even the little toe side of your feet. Turn your back toes, your left toes in your right foot and leg out on the ball of the foot first. Finish off the turn on the heel. Heel to arch alignment is what you're going for. Stretch your arms. Find the pelvic floor. Breathe through your nose if possible. Allow subtle movement on the feet as part of the expression of finding the relationships between ankles, knees, and hips, and pelvis generally. Stay in touch with the pelvic floor, raise your lead arm, inhale. Exhale, pelvis moves, spine enjoys the ride. Support the front of the leg with the back of the leg. That supports it. <clears throat> Non-mechanical investigative action, supporting the leg from behind allows the middle and the upper tissue to fold upwards. You know, like the way lava flows. You might have seen it on the television set. Lava flows. It kind of folds as it moves. That's the energetic instruction the energy kind of folds over itself and rises up and is supported by the back of the leg. And these energy movements are influencing, they influence muscle, influence skin, influence fascia. Inhale, come up, <clears throat> feet forwards, hands to hips, deep breaths. <clears throat> so take a few deep breaths, keep the jaw soft, the eyes soft. Back toes in, front foot and leg out, heel to arch, it's your alignment, you have to check it. Make sure your back little toe is at least given a little bit of your loving attention, because the back little toe does express quite a lot of our uh, tension. You spread that out and let it be relaxed. It's a subtle art, I know the art of extending the little toe I think is a yoga practice that is enough can have a whole yoga practice around people coming to class for an hour and a half just seeing if they can bring some love and lightness and space because it's symptomatic of the entire nervous system stretch your arms stay with your little toes don't let don't let them down they love you your little tiny toe inhale exhale um, again the back of the leg supports the front of the leg your hands somewhere between your knee and ankle. In one or two cases, perhaps long-armed folk might reach the floor. It's not better to reach the floor. In many senses, it could be worse. But certainly, if it's making you side flex your trunk. Looking up is optional. You don't have to do that. And certainly, 
If your neck is tense, maybe you need to concentrate more on releasing the hamstrings in ways that are, begin, are beginning to describe. You support the hamstrings in the front leg by pushing or supporting from behind, and then you get this folding, which is a meditation. Folding energy like lava, rolling up the leg, influencing. Enjoy your life. If you want. This is it. This is beautiful. This is it. This is beautiful. This is it. It's beautiful. Inhale. Come on up. <clears throat> Hands to hips. Feet facing forwards. Let's hear some deep breaths. Walk your feet now <clears throat> towards each other and kick your legs out a little bit just to bring the energy down into the legs, just kick them out a little bit. Feet together, <clears throat> toes spread. <clears throat> Multiple times if it helps, spread your toes. And raise up when you're ready the right heel. For me, I like to spend a bit of time with that heel raise and just really earthing down into the other foot, which could be moving it. Because I can feel when I move my foot, I'm preparing my knee, I'm preparing the hip, but not through mental preparation, not through stored up information, but through a direct live biofeedback sensation. I have to give to it. You know? When you're ready, the leg comes up, and you bring the heel into the thigh, it could be lower down, hands to pray. Rikshasana. Nasal breathing. There's a lovely subtle release potential on the inner groin. That's the inner groin of the raised leg. Place your hands, place your foot. Stand in Tadasana, take a deep breath. Take a few deep breaths. Give, you know, and you give by feeling into it. You know, it's not, <clears throat> it's not sort of completely passive, it's investigative, you know, like dancing. Raise up <laughs> your other heel. Bring the heel into the thigh, thigh into the heel, hands to prayer. Place your foot <clears throat> and take your feet apart, hip width. Check your feet at a level, equidistant from the front of the mat and also not turned in or out. <clears throat> See if you're standing on parallel lines that go through the gap between the second and third toe and out of the middle of the heel. Stretch out from your inner groin, raise your arms, inhale. Exhale, fold forwards and down. Touch the floor, bend your knees obviously if you need to. <clears throat> Movements of your feet change everything. So you move your feet, to move your back, to move your pelvis, to release your back. If your back's not released, bend your knees a little bit more. You can let your arms hang. Really focus on your back being released. 
Now bend your knees more, or bend them per se, until your ribs touch, your thighs let your head go. Bend your knees a little more. Bring your hands onto your thighs just above your knees. Straighten and lock the elbows. <coughs> and then come up all the way. Good. Time to lay on your back. So come down to the floor. your legs a little hug and you can roll left and you can roll right maybe you're a knees together leg hugger or a knees apart leg hugger most people are knees together I've noticed over the years I'm still quite staunchly a knees apart I'm alright with the knees together I slightly prefer knees apart <coughs> rolling left rolling right breathing Expressive breath. Sometimes you pause on one side and pause on the other side. Eventually returning to center, <coughs> landing the feet. Popping the hands under the head, fingers interlaced, feet close to the bum, feet apart. Lightly turn your belly in a wave, it goes in and up, so in and up, in and up, so just a little wave, and that wave takes hold of the pelvic floor very lightly. You know, it's sort of, it's totally non-mechanical, very light. Then you inhale, exhale, lift your bum. <clears throat> then it can move left or right, it can bounce. It can tilt, it can sway, right? and all these movements are serving three principal aims. One, keep your lower back long, the muscles long. Two, avoiding gripping the buttocks together. They're gripped, but not together. And three, finding the pelvic floor tangibly. You know, the first order reality, the direct experience without any story about what's supposed to be happening or not happening or what that person's supposed to be doing or not doing. It's a first order reality, direct. Bouncing, tilting, swaying. These are your tools. Swooping. Gradually let the pelvis drift back down. <coughs> Stay in touch with the pelvic floor. Once you've landed, take a deep breath in, followed by a deep breath out, and then a few more like that. Release your hands from underneath your head, <coughs> but just extend the back of your skull a little bit. You can use your fingers. Not dramatically, just enough. There's an attention towards the chest. And we're going to stretch out the legs. Turn up the palms. Tuck under the shoulders. We're going to lay flat on our backs. The shavas. Yoga Shastra says, find a lonely space. So it could be like a field or a quiet room in your house or a beach or a forest. 
forest. And it says, lay on your back with your mouth skywards facing the sky, as if you were dead. Lay on your back as if you were dead. Mm. And this is one of only four techniques on Ketu that the Dhatatriya Yoga Shastra recommends and says that for one who practices this, success is guaranteed. Lay on your back in a lonely place with your mouth facing the sky as if you were dead. And then adding a bit more detail, it says that if you like, you can add concentrating on your big toes. This is an access point to Prakriti, the, the living reality. And just to prove a point, as, as it were, it says also, all your thumbs Proving the point that the, you know, it's just access points from where you disappear through that portal, through those access points into Prakriti. The ever changing, interconnected, non personal. It's not yours. Belongs, how can something that belongs to everything be anyone's in particular? sets you free. She's beautiful. She's a liberator. She's the liberator. toes a little, maybe ankles, maybe your fingers, maybe wrists. And when you feel ready, you can bend your legs and place the soles of the feet on the floor. Look under the buttocks and catch a deep breath as you let the lower back entirely release into the breath. Take a few. Just experience what it's like to release the lower back entirely, totally, into the breath. in this time of possible isolation from Kumarvati. You can hear the crows in the background. <clears throat> she who makes a gift of isolation and autonomy and freedom. Roll onto your side facing away from where you hear my voice. Stretch out an arm or a leg. <clears throat> and eventually when you feel you've taken enough stretches, you feel ready to come up and bring yourself up from the side. <clears throat> because this is an intimate session, only you, <laughs> only you and me, we can say namaste to each other individually. Namaste. See you in the next video. I promise not to be so hoarse next time. Sorry about that. <clears throat>